Are you uh, convinced, as I am, that assuming Jerry won't be able to make a deal between now and opening day, and I, I don't think he'll be able to, we can talk through that in a minute, um, that Matt Brash is probably breaking camp as the fifth starter? Yeah, that, that seems that way. Uh, it, because it, it, the biggest thing here, Mike, is that they seem, Jerry seems the words that he's chosen anyway make me feel like they're not bringing in a number five starter. They're not bringing in a guy that has a limited ceiling and taking away this opportunity from Matt Brash or George Kirby or whoever, you know, they choose. Um, and, and I think that's the biggest thing for me. It's not necessarily Brash and Kirby's performance yesterday, what they've done this spring. It's th- th- they don't have anybody else and they're not going to bring anybody else in that particular position. If, if they don't make a deal for, you know, how did Jerry put it? A guy that can pitch closer to the top of the rotation than the bottom. If they don't find that, it's going to be Brash or Kirby. And you know what? I think before break, I heard you mention, uh, you know, the idea of uh, of Kirby and Brash making the club. And while I think you're right, I don't don't think that is happening. I like the idea of doing exactly what we saw yesterday uh, against the A's and and kind of piggybacking mm-hmm. one after the other. Because workload is going to be a concern for both of those guys this year. We're talking about a guy in Kirby who threw 97 innings last year. Or excuse me, Brass threw 97 innings last year. Kirby threw 67, and there was no 2020 season. They're going to have to be careful with those guys. Yeah, you can't throw them 180 innings and be like, whoops, sorry. I mean, like, you can't Dusty Baker this thing, and the next thing you know, you've got your uh, Mark Pryor, Kerry <laughs> Wood, and both guys are toast. And and I and by the way, I think there's a really good comp to those two guys. Like I see a lot of Kerry Wood and Brash, and I see a lot of Mark Pryor in Kirby. Sure, sure, absolutely. You know, it, especially when it comes to where they were in their careers when they were asked to do what you're talking about. Mm. I, I think that that's exactly where Pryor was a little bit more polished and threw more strikes. Kerry Wood was a little bit more raw stuff. That absolutely is Matt Brash and, and Mark Pryor. I like that comp. And I like just the, the you know, to get too deep into it, but the the way Kirby kind of looks like he's playing catch has some Mark Pryor to it, where it's like, man, oh, that was 98? Whoa, how did that happen? It looks like he was just kind of throwing nice and easy, and the ball just kind of kind of gets on you the way they throw. How many starters do you think you need to get through a season? You know, I look into this a lot, and I talk about uh, this quite a bit on the podcast. It's uh, it, You get teams that are winning a lot of games sometimes need 10, 12, 14 starters. Now, sometimes some of those starters only make one or two starts, but you have to cover 162 games. And I think the team last year that used the least amount of starters was, I think it was the White Sox with nine. Mm. So ultimately during the year, you're probably going to spread this out over – 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 starters. So, you know, even if you have to go to a bullpen day once in a while. Well, take those out of it. Take the bullpen games out for a minute because I I get that those are going to happen. And I tried to look at the Mariners last year and take out bullpen starts like, you know, when Middleton started or something like that. It looked like they needed about 10 to get through the season last year, give or take. I might have miscounted. But let's say it's about 10. How many do you think you have not bullpen days? How many starters do you think that are going to be major league caliber at some point this year are currently on the roster? Yeah, maybe seven. They're they're really short. Uh, like I don't see Justice Sheffield as a viable option to start right now. Like he could change my mind, but it looks like they're in reliever mode with him at mm-hmm. this point. Nick Margavishis could be a guy down in the the six seven eight range, but right now I, I don't know what's going on with him because he's only thrown an inning this spring. So it looks like if he's doing anything, it's in in uh, minor league games or on the side. So I'm not sure if he's an option to start the season. So we're really talking about the four that we know of plus Kirby and Brash. And maybe you get down to Levi Stout and an Ian McKinney after that. So they're short. I'm really surprised. We're not seeing more depth guys added that they might be able to stack. So so how do you do that? Right. If, if Jerry's saying, I want to add at the front, not the back. And I don't want to take away from the, from the innings of these young studs. I get what Jerry's saying. And at the same time, the momentum seems to have faded on big major league transactions. So it's hard for me to imagine that he's still going to be able to acquire the kind of arm that he's looking for. How do you, how do you increase the depth of your rotation without sacrificing the innings for these young pitchers? Yeah, I think the the depth part really at this point, because it really does seem like they've committed to, if they're not finding that one guy that pushes things back, um, you know, that it's really about 
uh, getting brash and Kirby the time. But uh, at this point, I'm thinking of like just triple A depth. I'm not even thinking of going out and getting the 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 Kyle Davies, the the Tyler Anderson types that that were out there. And there's still a few of them out there uh, on the free agent market. I'm not even thinking about. It. I'm thinking of can, can they get more triple A guys mm. that can cover you if you have a a rough situation because going the the route of the bullpen especially early in the year if something were to happen, would be disastrous for this team at this point. They cannot afford to lose a guy and then have to go the bullpen route two and three times through. Uh, you know, and, and I also think if, if Jerry DePoto was able to make a deal for the pitcher, the starting pitcher that they really want, you know, whether that's a one or a two or a three, whatever it is, like there's room for them for four to six weeks, maybe even two months, to go the route of the six-man rotation considering the short spring training and then back off of that. And that would give them more time to evaluate what they'd want to do with those kids, with Kirby or with Brash or with both of them. And, you know, at the end of the day, if we're sitting around worried about a team that has expectations set upon them now and has an opportunity to win 90 plus games, if they do things right and make the playoffs and end the drop, if we're worried about, what they're going to do with Chris Flexen in that situation. Mm-hmm. We're thinking about this wrong, Mike. Like, if you have to push Chris Flexen to the bullpen because you went out and acquired Pablo Lopez or something and you don't want to take the, the opportunity that you're giving away from Matt Brash, who's actually doing the job, then I guess that's just what has to happen. We really need to stop worrying about Chris Flexen at the back of that rotation. 